is Chewy. Come, Chewy. Come, sit, sit, sit. Sit, Chewy. Good dog. Yum, yum. Uh, English teachers have been using props to teach English since the beginning of language learning. Props are used with young learners to keep them engaged, Relia with older students to explain concepts, and these days no English class is complete without using props and colourful backgrounds. Today we will talk about why props are necessary for teaching English as a second language, the best props you need and how to use them appropriately in class. To talk about using props online, I've invited my dad for a talk. My dad has been teaching online for years. He's especially used to teaching students in China and he has a lot of experience in teaching young learners. So we are very fortunate to have my dad. Hi, dad. Hi, son. How are you today? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, this is Monkey. Hello, Eric. How are you today? I'm great, What's Monkey. What's the weather like in Korea? It's really hot right now. Oh, no, it's very cold here in Nanfei. Oh, Nanfei is South Africa for Chinese. <laughs> okay. Okay, no, thank you so much. Thank you for the invite. Uh, yeah, I'm the prop master. I, I'm using like 100 props. And they are all within grab distance. You name a topic and I can show you a prop. Sometimes it can be distracting. And then the kids run off and they go and fetch all their toys to show you all their toys. You use props in conjunction with your lesson. What it sounds like is that props are very useful, but you've got to use it with your lesson and appropriately. Otherwise, things can get out of hand. Now, I teach and when I teach, especially when I teach young learners, I love using props. Um, I think it really adds something to the lesson. The students are engaged and they have fun and they, they love something they can touch and feel and that's very colorful. So uh, I wanted to ask you, um, so what do you think is one of the best props that you like to use when teaching online, especially if you're teaching one on one when you teach online, right? Yeah, all my classes were all one on one. OK, so monkey, uh, monkey's um, standard uh, participant in my classes. Uh, he's the third person sometimes, especially shy children and of course just the younger ones um, I would ask monkey the questions and sometimes monkey will give the answers and it helps shy um, shy students a lot so oh, they create the a friendship with a with yes. the monkey I think it's so yeah. useful because learning shouldn't happen in isolation especially with young learners it should be more social where they work with someone and unfortunately when you're one on one it's just you the teacher and the student so if you can have monkey as a as a character and a friend to use maybe they can create some kind of bond and they can really enjoy working with monkey so i had many others depending on whether it's girls or boys with boys you would use the ninja turtle with his sword and then they will all jump up and go and fetch their own swords esl teachers should have some kind of mascot in class this can be a puppet or a stuffed animal the rounder and the fluffier the better students can learn how to socialize appropriately in class and to treat it gently yeah it's so much about engagement and i think we, we should never trivialize how we as teachers should engage our students. We can do it with the lesson, we can do it with the content, we can do it with the way that we teach, but also, you know, it helps if we've got some toys that the students are drawn to. So that's why I think having things that are interesting to them. And one more thing I would like to talk about is that um, with online teaching, your goal is for the students to share something about themselves. Uh, it's, just, it's like that for teaching at school too. The benefit of them being at home is that they can run and fetch something and they can show it off and they can talk about it more eagerly. And that's why that's probably um, what you were talking about. And of course, the girls. Um, maybe you would re recognize this one, a babushka doll. Wow. And <laughs> a week ago, I had a boy run and fetch a babushka that was twice this one's size and that had 10 little dolls inside. For those who don't know, a babushka is from Russia and you open one after the another one and usually I've got five dolls in mine 
but this boy had a massive, uh, a huge one with 10, with 10 uh, dolls. Yeah, and also, of course, uh, when we talk about utensils, stuff that you use, um, you know, in Asia, many kids don't use a knife and a fork, you know, so you show them a knife and a fork and how you eat with a knife and a fork. And of course, a spoon, a big, this is a big dessert spoon. spoon. And of course, um, they all use chopsticks, but they don't know what the English name is for it. Uh. <laughs> so, yeah, so you show them the chopsticks and, uh, oh, eating noodles. Oh, yum, 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 you know, so... <laughs> I like, and, uh, yeah. I, I like the way so, you're, you're acting out. So, yeah, the, uh, students, uh, if you use the real life items, they can learn the vocabulary quicker and more effectively. I mean, you could exactly. take five minutes to explain chopsticks or you can just yeah. show them or you can show them the action. So it really engages them. It's more visual and the students are interested. And, you know, I think with the students seeing what's inside there, they're very curious about maybe what does teacher Eric have next to show us? Exactly. Yes, for, um, for example, uh, do you know what these bugs are? Usually children just know bugs. But the word insect, insect, and then fly, housefly, cockroach, and mosquito. And this is uh, spray, insect mm. spray that you use to kill bugs. So, yeah, um, for e example, when you talk about personal hygiene, I've got this cute little uh, nail clip set from Korea. And then, of course, girls, all the students know what this, uh, know scissors, but they don't know what clippers, tweezers, or files are. And mm. the girls find it very interesting to learn stuff like that. What is very important with using Relia is that, um, I mean, you can use a flashcard and you can show the students. But the great thing about using Relia is that, um, you can create more sentences like there you were talking about, okay, well, this is a, a bug, but there's another word for it, insect, or you can use spray, or you can start talking about a fly versus a cockroach. So the, the beauty of Relia is that you can really use it in life and it's more effective than just showing them a picture. Although I think it's very useful for teachers to have flashcards. They're, they're, they're just more oh, convenient. Yeah especially exactly. in, in normal class. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, one of my other favorites, I must show you this one, especially for the young ones, was the magic flying pan. <laughs> and this is where you create story. We must create story. So they love the flying pan with all my bears, teddy bear. And this is, of course, koala bear. From where is koala bear? He's from Australia. Bao Bao uh, Bobo means baby, baby blue bear, and of course, little white bear. And oh. they would know these bears, and I would ask them what the names are. The, what, the difference between a pan, the magic pan with a handle, oh. this is the handle, and mm. then of course, a pot, a pot with a lid and mm. with short, with smaller handles, the difference between a pan and a pot. Stuff like that. Dad, you can I, 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 can, I, I can really see your experience coming through the way you, that you explain it and you take it a step further. That, that's a lot of experience teaching one on one. Uh, I mean, when a teacher sees another teacher talking about things, you, you can respect that. The other thing I saw is that in your background, you've got uh, it's a very colorful background that you've got for teaching online. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, uh, your. Um room it must create the atmosphere of a classroom so it's very important and and also it makes it more interesting than just a drab just the old teacher sitting there so and and i changed it every now and then i would change it you know how to decorate your esl classroom a prop that we shouldn't forget is the actual environment you should create an atmosphere that encourages learning Bright colors, animals, items they know with the word in English underneath. Every class needs a world map to show different countries and cultures as well as teach them geography. I must 
show you my ultimate prop, our pets. Okay, <laughs> let me call the uh, dogs because uh, some students would insist, teacher, uh, call the dogs. They want to see the dogs. For many of these children, they don't have pets in their apartments. So for them, it's really, uh, truly special to see pets and how you feed your pets. Dogs, come. <laughs> come. And I'll give them a dog biscuit. So you uh, that's like them. the highlight, the highlight of the, yes. the lesson. Oh, oh there here, you go. Here is Chewy. Chewy. Come, Chewy. Come. <laughs> sit, sit, sit. Sit to a good dog. Yum, oh, yum. So. Come, mattress. Okay, <laughs> his name is Mattress. Come, mattress, sit. Come, come. Take, boy, take. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the highlight of, uh, of the day. I, ca I can definitely see, see the dogs also enjoying it. Something I wanted to talk about before um, uh, we stop is also, you know, in my classrooms, I like using things like dice because it's a randomizer. Now, it, you can't always throw a dice around. So yes. I know that a lot of people use perhaps an app where you can have yeah. a random. Yeah, you've got a dice app on your on phone. A tablet. Mm -hmm. Using a die or soft ball for ESL class. I love having a fluffy soft ball or die to use. Students can play throwing games with it. You can create many different review games using toys, throwing it to each other, throwing it at targets, play games with dice where they play a board race. Uh, another great thing is having a whiteboard. It's very, you know, if you've got okay. a small whiteboard or a big whiteboard. Exactly. There we go, eraser. Eraser, eraser. And, uh, <laughs> Whiteboard. Clean the whiteboard. Clean the whiteboard with the eraser. Yeah. And then the blackboard yeah. on the back. Oh. Yeah, and the blackboard. Yeah, white and black. Yeah. Do you have any tips for uh, online teachers using uh, props in their classes? If you prepare for the lesson and then you've got stuff, and over time you will learn that there are so, uh, certain things that you really use a lot. For example, a key. <laughs> there is a key, and. A ring. Ah, there is my grandma's ring, you know, and a uh, rabbit. And I've got this fun box. I've got a lot of tools in this <laughs> no, Show us box. what's in the fun box. Show us the fun box. Okay, I've it? got white dog. I've got small dog. And, oh, monkey. Uh, this or a gorilla. I don't know if this is a gorilla. We spent lo hours trying to figure out. But look at his tongue. So... <laughs> Tongue is a word many students struggle to learn, you know, but there they see, okay, the tongue. You can learn body monkey parts stern. with the monkey. Oh, okay, and can you catch, can you catch one, two, three? <laughs> 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 Got lots of stuff in the box. It looks like you spend a fair amount of time really growing and cultivating your area to help teach students. And I think that's what we as teachers should do. And a lot of teachers think might think that teaching online is very difficult, but you've just got to find the resources, the tools, the, the props to make your lessons more engaging and to help the students have fun because they're very isolated alone. So it's up to you as the teacher to get through the computer and really interact with them and make learning fun. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and that was my experience as well. Oh, maybe you'll recognize this one. You bought her from <laughs> Vietnam. Vietnam. Right. <laughs> uh, I don't. And, and then also your mom's favorite was this uh, Korean doll. So having some yeah. dolls. The girls must really yeah, love those. You can talk about the dress and the blouse and, you know, stuff like this. And her hair. When should we use props? Try to use props that are relevant and improves learning. Relia is more suitable for older learners and if possible, use fake items for younger learners so that they don't break them or hurt themselves using it. Props do not substitute good teaching, but they can improve the learning experience when used by proficient educators. Remember, Make sure that students respect the rules and boundaries around props in the classroom. They have to handle it gently, shouldn't fight over it, or leave class with it. Props are there to help, but in an ill-disciplined classroom, that can lead to chaos. Teaching props are a bonus and belong to you or the school.
Dad, thank you so much Thanks. for teaching us and showing us how you use these two tools when teaching online. I think we can yeah. take some of these lessons and apply them to our normal classes too. Uh, any last yeah. words? Yeah, time is up. <laughs> <laughs> the school, let the school bell ring. Thank you so much. It was uh, my pleasure to share it. And I, as you know, we share this passion for teaching other people. Oh, Thanks. and I must tell, let's end up with a song. Da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so, before we go, two, two more things I think are fantastic. Something, some kind of noise that you can attract them with and a microphone to get them to talk. Thanks, Dad. Yes, um, it's, it's, it was great talking to you. I hope the viewers out there also enjoy it. Have a great day. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thanks to my dad for helping me with this video. Props are a useful teaching tool and every teacher, regardless of level, should incorporate props into their classes. If there is anything that adds value to the learning experience, use it. I'm Eric from Edicute and I'll see you next time.